All right, so today's project is a little bit of a whim. Sometimes deciding on what to build is a little bit of a challenge. And when I come across that challenge, a lot of the times what I will do is I will start putting restrictions on myself. So for this project, I had a bunch of offcuts of Wingay from a past project, and Wingay is pretty expensive. So each one of these drops is probably worth about 20 bucks. So if I were to throw them away, I'd just be throwing a $20 bill away for each piece. So I made using the Wingay scraps my restriction. It was the rule. I had to come up with a project to build using these scraps. So I came up with two different projects. One project I hope to build in the future. But for this project, I did an iteration on a past table, the portal table, which I did a little while ago, where I suspended a segmented ring between the trestles of the table. So basically, I'm going to recreate that segmented ring as something that I can just hang on the wall. So it'll be the segmented ring with three decorative bars and then we'll have a piece of steel with a patination process on it. So it'll kind of like be this abstract painting framed by the segmented ring. All right, so I think one of the most accurate ways to create a segmented ring is this wedgie jig. Basically, you uh, drop the wedge with the corresponding angle in it to the segments that you want to cut, and it cuts it perfect every single time. I've never not had it come out perfect. So there's no trying to sand two halves together like you see some wood turners do. Uh, if you're a wood turner, you should look up the wedgie jig. It is awesome and will save you tons of time in building your rings. All right, and between the rings, I'm going to accent it with Paduk. All right, so one of the challenges of getting the ring glued together is getting all those pieces somehow clamped tight enough so you have nice tight joints all the way around and enough clamping pressure for the glue to set properly. So one thing that I've uh, kind of developed over the years is I will tape a piece of tape down with the sticky side up and I will drag it out along the bench and I'll use the edge of the bench as a straight edge and then I'll come back and put a, a level down that I can use as a straight edge to butt all my pieces up against and that way I can stretch this piece of tape out and I can pull it tight and tape it down and tape all my pieces to it and then when I go to wrap it together since it's under tension because I pulled it tight it kind of helps pull all those pieces nice and tight together so I don't have any gaps and I have good clamping pressure. All right, and then of course I'm using West Systems Epoxy to glue it all together. All right, and then after all of that work, I bumped the level up against the tape and the tape stuck to it. And so right now I'm starting to freak out a little bit, having a little bit of a flashback to a past project to where I was not able to get the tape unstuck. But anyways, let's not let the past hold us back. All right, and then after uh, the glue is dry, I sent them through the drum sander just to clean them up and flatten them out. So that way I could glue the two rings together, staggering the joints, of course, to make it nice and strong. And then I attached a circle jig to it so I could pattern route it perfectly round.
To hang it on the wall, I'm going to use a little French cleat. So basically what I'm doing right now is just double stick taping a couple pieces of scrap wood to give me a place to ride my router in to make a flat spot on the back. So that way I can glue in a little, little French cleat there. All right, I forgot to hit record when I first started drilling, but basically what I'm pointing at here is I used a Forstner bit to drill out a little bit of a recess in the side of the French cleat that is going to push against the wall, and that is to allow for those little plastic heads of uh, a wall molly. So sometimes when you use those wall mollies, that little plastic head protrudes out and doesn't allow you to uh, mount flush to the wall, so that just gives that a uh, place to go. And then I'm just using a uh, tapered countersink bit to transfer the holes through to the other side and then countersinking it for a screw so I can screw it to the wall. <clears throat> All right, so got our French cleat glued in there and we'll just, uh, that does fit in there, no problem. So now, I want to add some decorative bars here. These are gonna get inlaid into the ring. So, I'm gonna build a little jig. All those YouTubers with their fancy workbench tops, butts just puckered. Oh my God, he screwed into it. How does he keep his workbench looking good for sugar daddies? I mean, sponsors. And then to prevent tear out, I'm just gonna use a marking knife to go around and trace the intersections to score the fibers. And then we'll use a router with a pattern bit to cut some grooves. All right, so got a little bit of a tear out, so we're just gonna glue that last little piece back in place with some CA glue and then sand it flush. All right, so the last step is to add our coloration, our patination to the steel. And uh, the first step is I'm going to clean it up with some radic acid to clean off any kind of mill scale, grease, oil, uh, and just make sure I'm down to bare metal. And then I'm gonna just start laying in some different uh, chemicals here to try to create some depth of color. I wanna go from some like 
bright copper color and layer it down into some just like worn black steel uh, in the end. So that's kind of the uh, the, the vision of this. Uh, it's always kind of a little bit of a surprise of what you're going to end up with because uh, Mother Nature does its thing and it's going to react how it's going to react. It's all dependent on uh, temperature, humidity, the, uh, the composition of the steel that you're using, uh, all that kind of stuff. So we'll see what we get here. I'm just kind of trying to decide which part of the patination I want to show and what part hidden kind of behind the bars. What's my favorite? What's my favorite section here? Go something like that. This is a picture framing stapler. Just shoots these little pins in there to hold the back in. Try to get a good picture without the glare from the lights. Let's go hang it up. All right, and there we go. Thanks for watching.